Welcome to Real Chemistry. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to calculate an enthalpy of reaction. And we're going to calculate an enthalpy of reaction from something called heats of formation. Now, if you haven't yet watched my video, Introduction to Heats of Formation, go ahead and do that first. It'll help you understand how to do these calculations a little better. So here the whole goal is. We're going to look at a reaction, and we're going to try to figure out what the enthalpy of that reaction would be. So you see here we have this combination of sulfur dioxide with oxygen to make sulfur trioxide. And what we want to know is how much heat is absorbed or released when that reaction runs. And that's what the enthalpy of reaction will answer for us. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can use heats of formation to calculate that enthalpy of reaction. So the problem says, use the table of enthalpies of formation to calculate the, heat, the enthalpy of reaction for the reaction below. And so we see the reaction below is the same one we just talked about on the previous slide. And then we see there's this table over here. And this table gives us critical information to solve the problem. It tells us that if we make sulfur dioxide, that it will give off 297 kilojoules for every mole we make. If we make sulfur trioxide, it will give off 396 kilojoules for every mole we make. And remember, we're making those guys from pure substances. That's the definition of the enthalpy of formation. So how are we going to do that? Well, you might have seen this big complicated formula to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the problem without showing you the formula first, because the formula can be confusing when really you're just multiplying and adding numbers up and it's not that complicated. And then I'll show you what the formula looks like so that you can kind of understand it a little better. So let's go ahead and follow the steps I have written down here for figuring out the enthalpy of this reaction. First, it says add up all the products times moles. What does that mean? Well, first I'm just going to write P for products. And I'm going to think about the enthalpy of formation for each product. So remember, my only product in this case is sulfur trioxide. And I'm forming only one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the number of sulfur dioxides times the heat of formation of sulfur dioxide. Trioxide, I'm sorry. Now, if I had more products than just that one, I'd keep going. I'd add up the number times the enthalpy of formation for the other product. And you'll see how that works when we get to the reactants. Okay, so the number of sulfur uh, trioxides is two. I'm sorry, I misspoke a second ago. And the enthalpy of formation for sulfur trioxide I get from that table. And it's negative 396 kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to put negative 396 there. And when I multiply those two together, I'm going to get out negative 792 kilojoules. That's for my products. I'm going to do that same step for my reactants. And what that means is I'm going to go ahead and add up the enthalpy of formation for sulfur dioxide, that's this guy, times the number of sulfur dioxides, which is two. And I'm going to add that enthalpy of formation to the enthalpy of formation for oxygen times the number of oxygens, which is one. So the number of sulfur trioxides is, or dioxides, sorry, is two. And the enthalpy of formation for sulfur dioxide, I go over and look at my table, and it's negative 297 kilojoules per mole. Now I need to add to that the number of oxygens, which is one, times the enthalpy of formation for oxygens. And you'll notice it's not in the table, and that's really common. If you have a pure substance, the problem is expecting you to remember that the enthalpy of of formation for pure substances is always zero. That's what this says. Delta H for pure substances equals zero. And since oxygen is a pure substance, it's all oxygen by itself, and it's in the most stable form of oxygen, that is O2, we just know that that's zero. So when I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to get out negative 594 kilojoules. So I've done step one and got 792 kilojoules. I've done step two, and I got 594 kilojoules. Now, step three just says subtract the products from the reactants. So I subtract what I added up there for the products from what I got for the reactants. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the delta heat of, form of reaction for this reaction I'm calculating above is equal to this guy, that is my product's enthalpy of formation, minus my reactant's enthalpy of formation, which is minus 594. 
And when I do that, these two negative signs are going to cancel out and it's going to give me a positive sign. So two negatives makes a positive. Now you got to be really careful here. It's very often the case that people will forget they're subtracting a negative number. And that's why I write those parentheses. I always write those parentheses so you can keep track of how many negative signs you have. And when you plug it into your calculator, you'll get negative 198 kilojoules. And that's equal to the enthalpy of formation for the reaction above. Okay, why is that? Why is it that this series of adding and subtracting numbers gives us the enthalpy of formation for the reaction? Well, let's think about what we did. We've taken how much energy it takes to form the products. That's our sulfur trioxide, the first thing we calculated. And we've subtracted the energy it takes to form the reactants. And energy is always conserved. So when I have reactants, it's really like I have the energy necessary to make them because that energy has been put into them and it's still there. And if I know how much energy it takes to make my products from pure substances, then I just subtract the energy it takes to make my reactants from pure substances. And because that energy is always conserved, that gives me the enthalpy of that reaction. Let me show you what the formula looks like that we've just used here. You'll see why I didn't show this to you first, because it looks kind of messy, right? What you're doing is you're saying the enthalpy of our reaction is equal to the number of moles for our first product times the enthalpy of formation for our first product, plus the number of moles for our second product times the enthalpy of formation for our second product. And you see this dot, 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 because that keeps going. If you have three or four or five products, you just keep going with this sequence of multiplying by the number of moles times the enthalpy of formation for that specific product. And then what we're doing is we're subtracting something that looks very similar for the reactant side. The number of moles of the first reactant times the enthalpy of formation of the first reactant. Plus the number of moles for the second reactant times the enthalpy of formation for the second reactant. Dot, dot, dot. It continues. If you have tons of reactants, you just continue with that. So this is the formula that we're actually using. And if you are inclined to like formulas, you might want to remember this. But I find it easier just to remember that I need to add up all of the enthalpies for the products, add up all the enthalpies for the reactions, taking into account the number of moles, and subtract them from each other. Let's do one more practice problem. So here we have the combination of hydrochloric acid, that's this first guy, with calcium hydroxide going to water and calcium chloride. And again, we want to know what the enthalpy of reaction is. And so I'm just going to split this up where we do products first and then reactants and we subtract them. I'm going to follow the same steps. So first thing is add up all the products times the moles. And so we'll look at our first product, water. How many waters are there? Two. So we need to write two. That's the number of moles of our first product. And now we need to write the enthalpy of formation. And here's where you have to remember that phase matters. A common trick in these problems is they'll give you the enthalpy of formation for a bunch of different phases of one of your reactants. So we're given water here. And if you look in our table, we have water that's solid and water that's liquid. Well, which phase is our reactant or our product in? Liquid. So we need to use this minus 240 kilojoules per mole. So you have to remember when you do these that phase matters because Phase transitions take energy, so it's just not going to be the case that the enthalpy of reaction will be the same regardless of the phase. Phases matter. You have to make sure the phase you look up in your table matches the phase that's in your reaction. So we need to use for water negative 240 kilojoules per mole because we have liquid water. So we're going to write down negative 240. So I've just taken into account water. So I have water taken care of. And now I need to take into account my calcium chloride. Notice it's aqueous. So I'm going to add to that the number of calcium chlorides. How many calcium chlorides do I have? One. Times the enthalpy of formation for calcium chloride. Again, I looked that up in the table. And they didn't give me a multiple phases for this one, so it's easy. I just look at calcium chloride. It is aqueous. And it tells me negative 880 kilojoules. So I put in negative 880. All right, and those are both my products. So I've taken into account all my products, and all I need to do now is plug those into my calculator. And when I do that, I'm gonna get out negative 1360 kilojoules. So that's for my products. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for my reactants, just like we did last time. You add up all the products times the number of each product, and all the reactants times the number of each reactants, and then we subtract those two. So my first reactant, we see is hydrochloric acid, HCl. And I have two of them. There's a two right here. So that means that I put a two 
So that means that I put a two right here. And now I need to look up the enthalpy of formation of my hydrochloric acid. And again, phase matters. So I need to find my aqueous hydrochloric acid because that's the phase that I have in my reaction. So I go over to my table. Which one's aqueous? Well, the second one. That's aqueous. And so this is the guy I need to use, negative uh, 770 kilojoules. All right. And then I need to add that to my second reactant which is solid calcium hydroxide. And I look into my table, I see calcium hydroxide at the bottom, it's solid, and it's negative 990 kilojoules per mole. So I have one of them times negative 990 kilojoules per mole. And when I do that math, I get out negative 1330 kilojoules. So now that I've calculated the, the enthalpy of formation for my products and my reactants, I just subtract them. So I subtract reactants from products, or I'm sorry, products from reactants. So delta H of reaction is equal to my products, that's this guy, and I'm gonna put it in parentheses to help me keep track of my signs, negative 1360, minus my products, or my reactants, negative 1330. So if I do negative 1360 minus a negative 1330, that's gonna turn out to give me negative 30 kilojoules. So you gotta keep sure, make sure you keep track of those signs carefully. And that's the delta H of reaction. So you can calculate the enthalpy of reaction from heats of formation. We do that by adding up all of the different products we have times the number of each of them and all of the reactants we have times the number of each of them. And then we take products minus reactants, that is final minus initial, and that gives us out the heat of reaction. And we can do this for any reaction, even if we've never run it before. And that's what makes heats of formation so useful. So if you have any questions on how to do this process, please ask them below. You can also go ahead and subscribe to Real Chemistry to receive updates about future videos, or visit my channel to see the videos I already have.